Welcome to this video about inflationary flavor oscillations. Before actually starting, let me begin with a few questions. Did you know that uh, multi-fill inflation was more likely than single-fill inflation? Did you know that primordial non-Gaussianities, those tiny deviations from the Gaussian statistics in the early universe, may carry information about the masses and the couplings of this primordial field content? Did you know that inflationary fluctuations may be described as flavor eigenstate coupled to zeta, the curvature fluctuation which then gives rise to the inhomogeneities that we observe in the CMB and the large-scale structures? Actually, like quarks and neutrinos, did you know that those interacting eigenstates are not the freely propagating eigenstates, and that this misalignment results in flavor oscillations analogous to the one of the standard model? In this talk, I will explain this analogy, and I will show that only upon a correct theoretical understanding of inflation can we use cosmological observations to actually measure the masses, but also the mixing angles of the inflationary theory. So let's recap. What do we know about inflation? Let's start by setting the big picture. The inflationary period, which is followed by reheating, is of crucial importance, as it sees the birth of primordial fluctuations, both uh, scalar fluctuations, which are nothing but the density fluctuations, and fluctuations of the tensor types, which are the gravitational waves. Importantly, cosmological inflation was introduced in order to solve the puzzles of the hot Big Bang model, one of which uh, being the observed homogeneity of the universe at the time of the emission of the CMB. In return, inflation has been able to predict the statistics of the small uh, inhomogeneities imprinted on top of this homogeneous background with a very high accuracy. And inflation is a unique framework. Indeed, it requires the use of both general relativity and quantum field theory, and we also dispose of experimental data of immense precision. In my opinion, that's what makes inflation such an exciting area of research. More precisely, a remarkable property of inflation is its so-called UV sensitivity. So on this schematic axis, we can see a few orders of magnitude of uh, the energy scales that we are uh, mentioning here. Although the scale of inflation is unknown, we do know that uh, physics that we would expect to be relevant at very high energies become actually important for the inflationary dynamics. First and foremost, the particle contents and the masses of the uh, active particles uh, during inflation. So, uh, taken at face value, this UV sensitivity of inflation, coupled to the fact that we have access and we will have access to even more uh, precision data, represents a unique opportunity to test uh, theories of uh, high energy physics beyond the reach of terrestrial experiments. But how do we prove the physics of inflation? How do we conclude about inflation uh, being of such kind or such other kind? So instead of a collider experiment for particle physics, we have cosmological uh, observations. And uh, these observations are so far many observations of the cosmic microwave background and of large scale structures. In the future, however, we also expect to have observations of the cosmological gravitational background to complete the picture. In particular, the object of study will be the statistics of the initial uh, fluctuations, so the correlation functions of zeta in the scalar sector and gamma in the tensor sector. In this talk, we will actually concentrate on the scalar fluctuations and more particularly on what we call higher order correlation functions that encode primordial non gaussianities Indeed, in the next few years, but also in the longer term over the next few decades, a number of large-scale experiments will prove the physics of the primordial universe on a large uh, amount of scales, and in particular, non gaussianities will be probed via uh, large-scale structure surveys such as DESI, that has already surveyed more galaxy spectra than any other mission before, and uh, Euclid, that should uh, hopefully be launched in the next few days after I am uh, recording this video. But obviously, these observational efforts, which uh, have a high uh, human and uh, financial costs can only uh, be uh, fruitful if the theoretical modeling is um, mature enough to enable a correct interpretation of the data. So, we have just seen that inflation is sensitive to high energy physics and that upcoming cosmological data represents a unique opportunity to test fundamental theories of physics beyond the reach of terrestrial experiments. But more in detail, what is the mechanism behind inflation? So, what's the mechanism behind inflation? 
Before going to multi-field inflation, let me remind you that single-field inflation, which is the simplest model that accommodates for all the cosmological observations to date, was very successful. Indeed, a large variety of flat scalar potentials enables to explain both the homogeneity on the very large scales of the CMB, but also the statistics of its anisotropies. But actually, flat scalar potentials, such as the ones needed for slow roll, are not uh, usually found in concrete uh, low energy re realizations of high energy physics, said otherwise, we say that they are not natural. Multifield inflation, on the contrary, and in particular with non canonical kinetic terms, as described by this field space metric GAB in purple here, uh, are encountered in uh, particular uh, realizations of uh, those high energy uh, theories. Uh, with any number of scalar fields and both potential and kinetic interactions, the scalar potential needs not be flat, which is uh, again preferred by these uh, theories. Uh, inflation in that case generically happens along a curved tra trajectory in the field space simply because you have more than one degree uh, of freedom for uh, inflating. We therefore have to define not only the adiabatic fluctuations but also the entropic ones. The adiabatic fluctuations is the one that is instantaneously parallel to the background trajectory, while the uh, entropic ones, sorry, are the ones that are perpendicular to this background trajectory. Now, just a small comment that we actually not necessarily need to rely on those covariant models of inflation that provide both uh, the inflationary background and the statistics uh, for the fluctuations that we can compare to uh, observations. We have a framework which is called the effective field theory of inflationary fluctuations that enables to bypass the model-by-model -model approach and to encompass some model-independent uh, results. As uh, I will show, this uh, has uh, no impact on uh, the talk that I am giving, since both with covariant models and with effective theory of fluctuations, we recover the same kinds of uh, multi-field interactions. So, how to compute the statistics of cosmological fluctua fluctuations from such a complicated multi-field model of inflation? Well, the technical steps are a bit lengthy, and I will not enter into the details here. If you want, you can just pause the video and read them uh, calmly. But uh, what you need to understand is that you have to define the adiabatic fluctuations, which is a co-moving curvature fluctuation in that case, zeta, and the other uh, correctly covariant uh, multi-field fluctuations, which are the entropic fluctuations f alpha uh, in this talk. So, what you need to do then is to expand the action up to cubic orders, that's a lengthy computation that uh, I did a few years ago, and you um, recover both a quadratic action, which uh, will uh, impose the free part of the theory, and some nonlinear interactions that will give you a bispectrum. So the quadratic action reads as follows. As you can see, apart from usual uh, canonical kinetic terms for the fields f alpha, uh, they are also coupled to, uh, together via a non-trivial mass matrix m alpha beta. When I, see, when I say sorry, uh, non-trivial, I mean non-diagonal. Also, those uh, new fields f alpha are coupled to zeta, the curvature fluctuation, via a bilinear coupling. And you see that this bilinear coupling takes a particular form since only the first of this uh, eigenstate that we will call the flavor eigenstate because there is this particular symmetry for the interactions, only the first field F1 interacts directly with uh, zeta. So, of course, you could adopt another uh, route and uh, you could uh, diagonalize your mass matrix M alpha beta if, you, if it is sufficiently uh, slow varying and define the mass eigenstates of the inflationary theory that I will denote as sigma i in this talk. Uh, there is a matrix of change of uh, basis O that enables to go from the flavor eigenstate basis to the mass eigenstate. And in this uh, basis, the sigma i are all coupled uh, to zeta via a coupling omega i that depends on the, on the initial bilinear coupling omega and the uh, rotation uh, matrix to go from the flavor basis to the mass basis. <coughs> So we have those two uh, relevant uh, bases, uh, one which are the flavor eigenstates and one which is the mass eigenstate. As you may have already guessed, the situation is very analogous to the one of uh, particle physics with both quarks and neutrinos where we have uh, flavor uh, oscillations. So let me be very quick as I'm sure you are all aware of neutrino oscillations, but one of the first observations that 
uh, hinted towards uh, neutrino oscillations was the missing solar neutrino problem. So on Earth, we are observing many less uh, electronic neutrinos than what we would expect the Sun to emit. The problem is solved once you accept that the electronic neutrinos are actually not the freely propagating eigenstates, which are rather the mass eigenstates, and uh, therefore that you have a conversion from electronic neutrinos to any other flavor of uh, neutrinos uh, via uh, the propagation, even without interacting with the medium. So, uh, in our case, the situation is analogous, as our detector would be the curvature fluctuation zeta that will give rise to cosmological observations that we that we have at hand, and the F alpha are the flavor eigenstates, the equivalent of the flavor uh, for the neutrinos, and sigma i are the freely propagating the mass eigenstates of our system. And in particular, the first of these flavor eigenstates, F1, can be decomposed as a linear combination of the mass eigenstates. And the coefficient in this uh, linear combination can be written in terms of mixing angles, just like, again, quarks and neutrinos of the standard model of particle physics. So, the lesson that we draw here is that due to the misalignment between the flavor and the mass eigenstate during inflation, we should be able to observe inflationary flavor oscillations. Of course, now the fair question is what process equivalent to the missing solar neutrinos uh, may hint at inflationary flavor uh, oscillations in the cosmological data. Now that we have understood what are the inflationary flavor and mass eigenstate, let us take one step back and define what is a bispectrum and explain how it can be used to measure not only the masses, the couplings, but also the mixing angles of the inflationary theory. A usual way to parameterize non gaussianities is to look at the bispectrum, the frequent function of the curvature fluctuation zeta. In Fourier space, the free wave vectors k should close and form a triangle uh, from isotropy. And um, depending on how the bispectrum changes as you deform this triangle in Fourier space, you uh, define what is the shape dependence of the free point function. This shape dependence is encoded into this function S that is called the shape function, and that is a direct probe of the interactions during inflation. In particular, they result in observables in the CMB and the large-scale structures that unfortunately have not been discovered so far, leading to only constraints on parallel negotiations. Let's take the example of single field inflation, for which Maldasena was the first one to compute the full shape of the bispectrum. He actually showed that the bispectrum was small as it was always proportional to the so called slow world parameters of single field slower inflation that must be much smaller than one by consistency of the uh, model. <coughs> Let's now consider two field inflation which uh, contains actually more information about the particle content of inflation since this one is uh, less uh, trivial now. So, um, the idea is to use in particular the squeeze limit of the bispectrum as a cosmological collider. So, what does it mean? Let's consider the following Feynman like diagram where you have an interaction between uh, the curvature fluctuation zeta and an extra entropic fluctuation f that you can also call sigma since there is only one flavor, there is no flavor oscillation, and the mass and the flavor eigenstates are of course aligned. As you can see, from this uh, exchange, you uh, should get some uh, remnant in the uh, free point function of zeta coming from the past interaction during inflation with this field uh, sigma. And indeed, what we find when we do the computation is that the squeeze limit of the bispectrum is not only proportional to the coupling constant between the uh, zeta and the f fluctuation, but it also has a particular power law scaling with kappa, which is the squeezing parameter, and that is nothing but the ratio between the momentum that is small to the momentum that is large in the squeeze limit of the uh, triangle. Also, we have a distinct uh, oscillation, oscillatory pattern in the squeeze limits with some oscillations linear in the log of kappa and where the frequency of those oscillations is given by uh, the mass of the extra uh, field sigma. So, um, how does this uh, generalize to a many field uh, inflation? Where many field, I mean more than two field inflation, so starting at n equal 3. In that case, we have more than two entropic uh, fluctuations, and we therefore expect to have, in general, both flavor and mass eigenstates to be uh, not uh, aligned one with the other. And therefore, when we look at the exchange of one flavor eigenstates F1, since it is the only one that is directly coupled to zeta, we actually have to decompose it in terms of the freely propagating eigenstates, which are the signal fields. And we have this kind of diagrammatic expansion. 
When we uh, compute again the squeeze limit of the mass spectrum, this time what we find is the following. First, we have a sum over all the individual contributions that we would find if there was just one of the sigma fields. But you can see this function f of theta e in red here, which says that the uh, various weights in front of the individual contributions depend on the mixing angles of the inflationary theory. So, uh, schematically, we have the following results. We have some uh, modulated oscillations in the squeeze limit, since the sum uh, of uh, cosine are uh, nothing but cosines of the sum of the frequencies uh, times cosines of the difference of the frequencies. And uh, those modulated oscillations have some fundamental frequencies that are uh, given with different weights depending on the mixing angles. So, in the concrete example of uh, free field inflation, we have two flavor eigenstates, F1 and F2, and two mass eigenstates, sigma 1 and sigma 2, that each have a certain mass. We will assume as before, sorry if I uh, forgot to mention it, I am here considering uh, heavy fields which have a mass that is slightly greater than the Hubble scale. So, I'm still doing this here. And when we look at the squeeze limits, uh, we see these modulated oscillations, and we see that if we change the mixing angle, we will get uh, more or less uh, modulated oscillation. So if we perform some kind of schematic Fourier transform of the signal uh, of the squeeze limit of the base spectrum, what we would get is the following, with uh, peaks that depend on the values of the mass of the uh, particle content, but also of the mixing angles of the inflationary theory. So to conclude, we have shown that uh, we uh, should have access to a cosmic spectroscopy of the particle content during inflation, not only the masses, but also the mixing angles of the inflationary theory, which I repeat, are nothing but parameters of the model of inflation that we need to uh, uh, constrain via observations. Uh, and therefore, this provides some uh, observable of this phenomenon of inflationary uh, flavor uh, oscillations. Let me uh, finish by uh, proposing a few uh, directions uh, to go beyond. Uh, I will not mention all of them, you can just uh, read that, uh, the, the slide and uh, corresponding paper and wait for the one that is coming soon. So, Thank you for your attention and have a good uh, cosmology from home 2023 conference.